we've got quite a number of different types of tram cars built over the different years and um, open cars for the hot summer days and the closed ones for the more inclement weather but they're all got common features what i suggest we do is is have a look around the tram a little bit closer and we can look at some of the sort of interesting features on number one. The characteristic long arm that you can see on the roof of the tram is known as a, a trolley um, and that's the way that the electricity is collected by the tram from the overhead live overhead wires. At one end it's got the, a wheel, a brass wheel with a groove in it which runs along the wire to collect electricity and at the other end there's a trolley base with very powerful springs which ensures that the, the arm is kept in contact with the wire at all times. The trolley has always got to trail the tram, we can't drive what we call the trolley leading because it's always um, trailing behind the tram in that direction and at the end of the line when we get to the very end we've got no turntables or anything like that to turn the tram round so all we simply do is drop the trolley off the wire, turn it round and put it to the other end of the tram and the driver, the tr tram driver, will pick up the handles from the control of the air brakes and go to the other end, plonk them on the controllers and air brake at the other end of the tram and we carry on back in the opposite direction, it's as simple as that. Each of our trams is mounted on a pair of bogies um, which support the tram at the outer end at each end of the body. So as the two bogies, there's four sets of wheels on underneath the tram and because the tram doesn't change direction we can be able to number them number one, two, three and four from the Douglas end. The wheel itself has a rim on here with a flange on it and that's what keeps the tram on the rails because the, the flange sits inside the rail head. The entire bogey itself can turn and pivot as it goes around the many curves on the railway to keep the tram in the right direction. The combination of the flanges on the wheels and the turning of the bogies will, will keep the tram moving along. So the driver all he's got to worry about is the speed and braking of the tram. Inside the bogey here there's two motors. So the tram has got overall has got four motors. These are 25 horsepower motors. So in total there's 100 horsepower on this particular tram, which is powerful, enables the tram to go up our, the steep gradients on the railway. And the motors are turned in opposite directions in each axle so that the, the power from the motors is equal inside the bogey. To ensure a comfortable ride for the passengers, there's spring in, in here and also on the axle box here. And if I open the axle box up, you can see inside there the end of the axle. This is a brass bearing which is mounted on top of the axle. And there's the end of the, the, end of the axle itself. And inside there is wadding. So once a week what we do is get the oil can, pour oil into the axle box and the wadding lubricates the axle. Without oil it would get hot very very quickly. And here there's a hidden behind the frame there's a, a pipe coming down from a hopper underneath the seats in the passenger saloon which contains sand. So the driver operates a pedal, releases the sand by gravity which comes down here and drops onto the rail head at the end of the pipe here. So that gives the tram extra adhesion on gradients if required. At the front of the wheel here on this bogey is the brake. So when we move the, the brake handle, this metal block moves in and out from the wheel. So you apply the brakes through the handle, the brake handle on the, the driver's cab, and the, the brake, this metal block clamps very, very heavily on, on the wheel. So this is the compressor, which compresses the air for use on the brakes. As I said, there's a, a governor which detects when the air pressure gets low and it gets to a certain low pressure, automatically switches itself on and compresses air which is then stored in another tank on the other side of the tram for use by the brakes. This is the brake cylinder which is used to apply the brakes. So the driver applies the air through the handle, releases air from the tank on the other side of the tram through a pipe into the cylinder which in turn pushes a piston moves the piston rod, moves the levers and the chains underneath and there's a series of levers on the bogey itself so when the air is released all the spot moves back and forth and applies the, the blocks onto the wheels and clamps them firmly to slow the tram down. So this tank stores the compressed air so the compressor compresses the air to a, a, up to about 120 pounds per square inch and then the compressed air is stored in this tank here until it's required to be used for the brakes. So underneath there's a little drain cock, so we release that. That's the compressed air being allowed to escape. 
We have to drain the tank at the end of the day. As you can see, there's moisture accumulates in the bottom and you can get rust inside the tank. It makes that lovely noise. The tramway is very unusual in the British Isles that we regularly haul trailers. There's very few other tramways that ever did. And that's the purpose of this device, the coupler, is to couple the tram and the trailer together. So this is called a cod's mouth. And to couple the tram and trailer, we use one of these long metal bars. So if I lift this, the weight up, insert the slot end of the bar into the cod's mouth, bring up the key and lock it like that. The bar is locked inside there, and the other end, of course, goes in the trailer. It's a very, very simple device, but very, very effective. It works very, very well. So to move, I'll lift that up, lift the pin, and out. So inside the tram, we can see the beautiful woodwork it shows the skill of the joiners that built the tram back in 1893. Back at that time, there was no real sort of proper standard design for a tram, and there's lots of clues in here of how they adapted designs of horse trams into an electric tram car. So really the wooden body on this tram is what an extended version of what you would see in a typical horse tram. It's longer to mount on the bogies. And in particular, you can see that in the roof. This is called a turtle back roof with these sticks that support the roof. This is a cholestery where we can open the little windows there and let in on a nice hot sunny day like today, you can let in the fresh air or maybe for people who smoked inside, let cigarette and pipe smoke out. And the flat piece on top, now traditionally, on a double decker horse tram, that's where on the outside you'd have that knife board seat on the outside. And the other sort of clues for um, the horse tram sort of design and evolution is that the bodywork is very strong but very sort of simple in the way of the cross section of the timber, it's, it's very, very sort of small. And the idea for that was in a horse tram, obviously the lighter of the tram, the greater the load the horse could pull, the more pass can put on. So you can see the sort of evolution from a horse tram to an electric tram in this vehicle. So that the passengers sit on these wooden seats down the side of each tram. It's called longitudinal seating, where you sit with your back to the windows and, and face each other. Um, claimed to be very, very comfortable at the time they were built. But I think the amazing thing about this tram car is 130 years old and it's still doing today the very same job that it was designed and built to do way back in 1893. So what a tribute to its builders and the people, the team at Derby Castle Yard here that maintain the trams today, that you can still ride on this amazing 130-year-old Victorian tram car. It's an incredible achievement. <laughs>